everybody, John at IPT Trans. Today we're installing the TL175 shift kit. Get tons of calls, tons of emails, tons of people doing it wrong. Uh, we're probably going to break this down into three or four parts, so keep tuned for all of them. Okay, first things first, we want to stay organized. There's a bunch of different length bolts here, and you don't want to put them in the wrong spot and you know make any mistakes like that. So first we're going to take the solenoids off. Right. These two bolts here, and then six more. This is a 1G valve body, so instead of three solenoids up here, plus the pressure control, we have two and a block off plate. So this is your main difference between the 1G and the 2G that you're going to see. Now when you put these solenoids back on, they have to go in the right spot, obviously. So we're always going to have yellow, orange, then if it's a 2G, you're going to have the red. And the pressure control is going to have blue wires going to it. Now we have these bolts. I'm going to put them in this tray all in one spot. So all our solenoid bolts are going to be in one spot, and we're also going to remove this plate that is bolted to the valve body that holds the solenoids. Okay, and this kind of comes right off. Now also, we have the manual valve, which we're going to take out. And we have two more bolts that hold a bracket that looks like this and the end of the wiring harness. Okay, And again, all the solenoid stuff is going to stay in one little pile here. So this is what we end up with. The pressure control, your two shift solenoids, the plate, and the wiring harness. Okay. The next piece we're going to take off is the top brown body piece. And we're also going to keep these bolts in a separate section. Okay, so all of these are going to get their own little spot in the tray also. And when you take this off, you're going to have a metal separator plate and the lower valve body. What I also do is on these valve bodies, I'm not going to take the bolts out of the end plates, but I'm going to loosen them all up, which is going to make it easier to clean. Now under here, we're going to have one steel check ball. And if you want, you could kind of mark its location. So we have one steel check ball. Then we have a spring. And there's another check ball underneath that. Okay. We're going to take the rest of the valve body bolt. The remaining ones are pretty easy. They're all the same length except for one. And I'll show you that one different one when we put it back together. I'm going to lift this piece off. And we have our other separator plate. Now in the main part of the valve body, we're going to have four check balls that you have to mark, and there's two retainers. Just take careful note of where these two retainers go. A lot of people put them in the wrong spot, it will give you shifting problems. This one typically will not fall out. This one always will. Okay. So if you want, maybe you put a little mark in the spot where that one goes back. And also you'll see there's a little valve in here 
the valve has to always be on top of the retainer when you put this back together. Okay. Now what else is going to fall out is your neutral to dry valve. Okay, we're going to do something with that later. Right, same thing here, I'm loosening up these end plates. This one I'm going to take all the bolts out, except for the two on the end. It looks like this valve body may have a shift kit in it already, but that doesn't matter for our purposes. I'm still going to show you everything that you got to do. Now, you're going to have a few more bolts in your check balls and the one horseshoe clip that falls out. Okay. On most of these valve bodies, you're going to have steel check balls, but this one already has the updated Thorlon ones because, uh, as I said, it has a shift kit in it already. All right, so you're going to put this all to the side. And what you do now is give it a good cleaning. I mean, you probably don't have a tank like this, but you want to clean anything with, you know, mineral spirits or... or uh, Break clean or however you want to do it, but it's real important for this to be very, very clean. After you clean it, you want to, I wouldn't recommend blowing it with air because that's how things come flying out and getting lost. So I would just turn it over and, and let it air dry for the most part. All right, we have everything laid out. As I said, we keep all the bolts separately for each section. Now they're arranged by length, okay, so these are the bolts that hold the valve body halves together. These are the bolts that hold the solenoids to the valve body. And these are the bolts that hold the lower valve body to the main valve body. The solenoids are here. Now down here, these are all the ports from the shift kit. I have them set up where the ports that you're going to use in the lower valve body are in one spot and the parts of the upper valve body are in another spot. And then we have these two other parts, which we're probably going to not use, and I'm going to tell you about that and why. We also have drill bits that come with the kit. We said we have everything cleaned up and laid out, nice and dry and clean. Um, the first thing we're going to do is drill out the separator plate according to the instructions that, that come with this kit. All right, um, something to take note of here. This comes with an instruction sheet, but I'm not going to be going in, in the order that this is in necessarily. So just try and follow along. And everything that I'm saying is probably in this instruction sheet, but we're going to skip a couple steps that I think um, should probably be omitted. All right, two separator plates in this thing. Um, they're both going to need holes drilled. Now, this is real important to take note of. These things have a tendency to, to wear out one of the holes. Okay, this hole is underneath that steel check ball and that relief spring that we took out before. Um, when it looks like that, there's no fixing it. I mean, what we got to do is get another separator plate. All right, and the new separator plates, as, as to the time we're making this anyway, are still available at the dealer under that part number. 